Minister Allott, uh, can I ask whether you'd prefer to be sworn or to make an affirmation? An affirmation, thank you. Thank you. Do you mind standing? Please repeat after me. I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm. I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Allott. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Holland. Is your name, is your full name Richard Hugh Allott? It is. And is your current business address 167 Flinders Street, Adelaide? Yes. Um, and are you the chairman and a non executive director of AMP Superannuation Limited and NM Superannuation Proprietary Limited? Yes. And those companies are the trustee trustees of the a of AMP superannuation funds, is that correct? Yes. Um, you were appointed uh, a chairman of those companies in June 2016? Yes. And you were appointed a non-executive director uh, in December of the previous year, 2015? That's correct. Um, have you received a summons to appear at this round of uh, hearings of the Commission? I have. Uh, and do you have the summons with you? I Mr. do. Allott? Attend to the summons, Mr Commissioner. Exhibit 5.264, the summons to Mr Allott. Mr Allott, um, have you prepared four witness statements which address certain topics and questions specified by the Commission? I have. Um, do you have originals of each of those statements with you? I do. Is the first of those statements dated the 25th of July 2018 and relates to rubric 5-06? Yes, it does. And it relates to the funds of which NM superannuation is the trustee? That's correct. And you've also prepared a supplementary statement to rubric 5-06 following a further request from the Commissioner. And that statement is dated the 15th of August 2016. That's correct. 18, I trust. 15 August, 18, I 18. trust, rather than 16. <laughs> beg your pardon. You're, a, you're beg, ahead beg of us, Mr <laughs> Allott, if, if that was yeah. right. Yeah, go on. Um, is the supplementary statement, um, in the supplementary statement, you also make some corrections to your statement 5-06 and some of the other statements you've made? Yes, I do. And subject to the corrections made in the supplementary statement, are those statements true and correct? Yes, they are. I tend to, uh, Mr Commissioner, I tend to statement 5-06 and its exhibit. Exhibit 5.265, the statement of 25 July 18 in relation to rubric 5-06. I also tend to the supplementary the statement. Supplementary statement of 15 August 18. 2018. <laughs> Concerning rubric 5-06, uh, exhibit 5.266. Um, Mr Allett, you've also prepared another statement dated 25 July 2018, uh, which relates to rubric 5-15. Yes. It relates to the AMP Retirement Trust, of which AMP Superannuation Limited is the trustee. Yes. And subjects, subjects to the corrections in the supplementary statement I referred to a moment ago, is that statement true and correct? Yes, it is. I tend to that statement, Mr Commissioner, and exhibit, its exhibit. Exhibit 5.267, a statement of Mr Allerton. It's exhibits 25 July 18 uh, concerning rubric 5-15. <coughs> the final statement you've prepared, Mr Allerton, is dated 1 August 2018 and it relates to rubric 5-34. Yes. Yes. And it relates, uh, I take it, to the AMP Superannuation Savings Trust, of which AMP Superannuation Limited is also the trustee. That's correct. And subject to the corrections in the supplementary statement I referred to earlier, is that statement true and correct? Yes, it is. I tend to that statement. And statement of Mr Allett and its exhibits of 1 August 18 concerning rubric 5-34 is exhibit 5.268. Mr Commissioner, I trust that Mr Allett has his original statements in the, in the witness box. I do. Yes. Yes, Mr Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, just before we begin, can I just 
offer a pre-warning, which is I understand there are a lot of documents still being uploaded into the court book because for whatever reason they have been reproduced this morning and are now being uploaded. So we may find as we're going that some documents don't come up and we'll attempt to manage that as best we can. We may, it may become convenient to take an earlier break this morning than we might otherwise See how we do. go, Mr yes. Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Allett, I just want to make sure that it's clear what the structure is of the operations of the trustee for, or I should say trustees for AMP. There are two trustees at the moment, AMP Superannuation Limited and NM Super. Yes. And each of those trustees is the trustee of more than one superannuation fund. That's correct. And the trustees share the same board. Yes. And AMP Super is the trustee of the AMP Retirement Trust. Yes. And that's sometimes or often referred to as ART. Yes. And AMP Super is also the trustee of the Superannuation Saving Trust. Correct. And that's sometimes referred to as SST. Yes. And there are many products within the Superannuation Saving Trust. Yes, there are. And then on top of that, AMP Super is also the trustee of an eligible rollover fund. That's correct. Now, AMP Super, as we understand it, has another entity that carries out all of its administration. Which entity is that? Uh, AMP Services. But it has, I mean, it's delegated its, its functions to other companies within the AMP group, AMP Life predominantly, and AMP Life then delegates to others, but AMP Life, AMP Capital, etc. Is it, let me ask you some questions about our understanding of the AMP super structure and you tell me if this reflects your understanding. AMP super has invested the assets of the fund in life in or investment linked life insurance policies issued by AMP life. Yes. And the assets are then attributed by AMP life into certain statutory funds that it operates. Yes. And then AMP life contracts with AMP capital. It might be AMP capital investors. In AMP event, capital. Really AMP right. capital is how it's always referred to, to carry out the investment management for those funds. Yes, that's correct. And you referred to AMP services. AMP services contracts with AMP super to provide certain services to AMP super. Look, I've set out the structure, but AMP Life might actually contract AMP services to do things. I see. It might... I understand what you're saying. It might well be that it's actually AMP Life... Yes. ..who contracts with AMP services... Yes. ..rather than AMP Super contracting with AMP Correct. services. And what that reflects is... ..effectively, the entire administration and operation of the trust is handed over to AMP Life by AMP Super. Effectively, yes. And it's AMP Life that prepares and issues the product disclosure statements on behalf of AMP Super? Yes. And in fact, I think when you actually look at who the relevant contact person is, at the contact entity at the end of the PDS is it's AMP Life rather than AMP Super. Yes, that's right. So that's... AMP Super, and we'll come back to that. Now, NM Super operates in a different way? Yes, slightly different. Slightly differently, but effectively, the outcome is the same. 
by the outcome is the same, you mean there's a related party member of the group that takes over full responsibility for dealing with the operation and management of the trust? Effectively, yes. And in the case of NM Super, that related party entity is NMMT? Correct. And I think we may have skipped a step. We may not have talked about how many super funds NM Super is the trustee for. It is the trustee for the Wealth Personal Superannuation and Pension Fund. Yes. And that's often just referred to as wealth. Yes. And it's and within wealth, again, there are many products. Yes. And for example, wealth is the superannuation fund that contains products like North. Yes. And also contains products like Portfolio Care. Or you're not sure? I'm not sure of Portfolio Care. Okay. And some of the products are still open and some of the products are closed. Yes. And then... Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether the wealth products have closed, but in some of the funds that NM Super is the trustee of, yes. there are some closed funds, yes. I, I think closed products rather than closed funds. Oh, I beg your pardon, closed products. Is that right? Uh, no, there's some closed funds under one of the super... I wonder if you're thinking of... Was there a fund called the Retirement Plan? Yes, that's now been transferred into wealth. Yes, it's, there's been a, yes. a successor fund transfer where that fund, the retirement plan, has recently been transferred into the wealth fund. Correct. Is that what you mean by a closed fund? No, I mean that there's some closed funds in the retirement fund that's under NM Super. All right, we'll, we'll see if we're able to identify what that is. There's another fund of which NM Super is the trustee, which is the Super Directions Fund. Yes, and that's and the, the one that has closed products. You know. Yes, I think, <laughs> I think what you'll find is that both Super Directions Fund and Wealth has, have closed products within them. Yeah, well, I could accept that, yes. And Super Directions Fund has, for example, a product called Super Directions for Business. Yes. And Super Directions Personal. Yes. And then there's a, another fund, which we think has all closed products, which is the National Mutual Retirement Fund. Yes. And then there's another fund we think also has all closed products, which is the National Mutual Pro Super Fund. Yes, the Pro Super Fund just has life policies. You know. Yes, and that, they're closed, I think, too. Yes. The, is that right? Yes. Okay. And so NM Super, for all of its super funds, has retained NMMT to carry out most of the management in relation to those funds? It's appointed NMMT effectively as its agent, which in turn is appointed AMP Life. I see NMMT, as you understand it, has appointed AMP Life to do certain things as yes. well. And you referred to the agency agreement. I wonder if it will help if we bring that up. This is, I think, an exhibit from memory. It's tab 10 to your statement 5-06. Yes, it's tab 10 to your statement 5-06. It's AMP.6000.0125.0100. Sure, if Mr. Oh. Allard is clear whether he should be looking at the document. It's now come up on well, the agency agreement cover has come up on my screen. Yes, and you should feel free if you've got your statement there. 
with you, Mr. Allen. We have the statement, but not the exhibits. I assume oh, I the exhibits are trolley loads. There are four volumes of exhibits for just one statement. Thank you. So this is the agency agreement, yes. Mr. Allett, and yep. you've exhibited it to your statement. Yes. Is it a document that you would have reviewed in the course of your chairmanship before, before coming to give evidence? No. Okay. And then we see that this is dated the 30th of June, 2005. Yes. And if we go to page .0106, we see this is a continuation of the recitals and recital D is this agreement is intended to govern the relationship between the principal who is NM Super and NMT as it relates to the services set out in clause 3 following the retirement of NMMT and the appointment of the principal as trustee of the NMMT funds. Yes, I see that. Now, this might be before your time, but do you know whether NMMT was originally the trustee of the superannuation funds and was then replaced by NM Super? I think that was the case, yes. And then if we go to page .0112, Yeah, I'm there. <coughs> Just waiting for it to come up. You see there's clause three at the bottom of the page, which is services. Yes. And the services to be provided by NMMT include a performing on behalf of the principal all obligations imposed on the principal and exercising on behalf of the principal any of the principal's rights, powers, or discretions in connection with a relevant agreement or the funds as contemplated under a relevant agreement. Yes, I see that. And there's then various other things that the that NMMT is inclusively appointed to do, but if we go over to page dot zero one one four, we see subparagraph E operating as agent of the principal bank accounts as required to facilitate the collection of funds to which the principal is entitled and the disbursement of funds to discharge liabilities of the principal under relevant agreements or as trustee of a fund. Yes, I see that. And so as we understand it, the effect of this is that everything from the collection of money through to the administration of the trusts, through to the decisions as to entry into investment management agreements is handed over to NMMT. Yes. And NMMT's reimbursement is then set out on page .0135. which is in 1.1, all fees and charges specified in the offer documents and application forms for the funds will be collected by M NMMT from the member's cash accounts. And then in 1.2, NMMT will pay the fees due to be paid under the relevant agreements directly to service providers of the funds. That's what it says, yes. And then 1.3, NMMT may retain the remaining collected fees as payment for its services. Yes, that's what it says. So that the effect is, as we understand it, NMMT collects all of the money paid by members of the fund, pays whatever <coughs> for whatever services need to be paid for to operate the fund, and then retains the balance. Yes. And in practice, that is how it all operates as well? I think it is, yes. Um, 
But in my mind, uh, as I said earlier, AMP Life is carrying out the obligations. Um, NMMT must uh, engage AMP Life to do its functions, but channeled through NMMT, I expect. I see. And in terms of what role that leaves the trustee, how do you see that? The role of the trustee? Yes. After it's <laughs> subcontracted or appointed as agent NMMT to carry out everything, if it's NM Super, or handed over all of its investments to AMP Life and entrusted it with administration in the case of AMP Super? It's to monitor what, what actually happens. I see. So it is then dependent upon reporting that comes back to it? Correct about what's occurred? Yes. And as we understand it, if we're to talk about just the trustee, there's an office of the trustee? Yes. And Ms Sampson, who's going to give evidence after you, is the head of that office? Correct. Or was the head of the office? Is she she still, is the head. She is still the head of the office. And how many other employees are there within the office of the trustee? Oh, approximately 10. I see. And they all report to Ms. Sampson? Yes. And are they all full-time devoted only to the work of the Office of the Trustee? Yes. And has that been an increase in the number of employees since you've been on the board? I could have been. I'm, I'm, I didn't ask when I was appointed how many, and I haven't asked. I understand it's approximately 10 now, but it would be added to as the need arises. And then there's the board of the trustee of which there are three members? Yes. And you're looking at the moment to appoint more members to the board? Yes. And you are the chairman of the board, as we've already spoken about? Yes, I am. And then there's two other members who have been there each for about a similar period of time to the time you've been on the board? No, Daryl Mackay's been there for, um, well, he was, Back in, as an executive, I've set this out in my witness statement. He was an executive, he became a non-executive director three or four or five years ago. Louise Dudley, who's the current director, came on the board in June 2016 when I became the chairman. And you were appointed to the board in 2015? December 2015. Now, I wanted to ask you about the approval of payments that are made to AMP Life and NMMT. Can we bring up AMP.6000.0128.7106? discover in a moment, Commissioner, just how badly this is going to go. It doesn't appear for the moment that we have electronic copies available. You'll see Mr. Allett, you have to, there's this same front page on the front of every board pack yep. where it sets out AMPs. Yep. I think it's called Owning Our Culture. And then if you turn over to the second page, which is dot seven one zero eight, we can see this is the pack 
for a meeting of the board to be held in August of 2017? Yes. How often does the board, how often do the concurrent meetings of the boards of AMP Super and NM Super occur? It was planned to have five board meetings a year uh, and other board meetings as required. Um, this year, of course, we've had a lot more board meetings. A lot more issues have presented themselves this year, so you've Correct. had to have more meetings. Yep. And if we go to page dot seven two zero nine, that should have a numeral one hundred and four on the bottom of the page, Mr. Allen. <coughs> Could, sorry, what It should be page? page 104 on the bottom of the page, Mr. Allen. Yes. <clears throat> Now this is a paper to the boards of the trustees dated the 1st of August 2017. Yes. And it's titled Review of Fee Arrangements. Yes. And it's prepared by Mr O'Farrell, the Director of Finance Operations. Yes. Where does Mr O'Farrell sit or where does Finance Operations sit? Uh, within AMP Life. And you'll see the recommendation is that the boards of AMP Super and NM Super note the existing fee arrangements. Yes, I see that. And that reflects the way in which these agreements operate, which is the trustee doesn't have to approve anything or review anything before payments are made. Well, we have a... Uh, uh, Excuse me, uh, what, what payments? Um, it's a very general question and... That's fine, we'll go through the payments. This concerns the payments that AMP Life receives from the superannuation funds of which AMP Super is the trustee and the payments that NMMT takes from the super funds of which NM Super is the trustee. Yes. And it also concerns payments that are made with respect to service fees? I just need to read the paper. All right, yeah. please do. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. You've read the paper yep, now, Mr. Allen? Yep. Thank you. 
you presumably would have read it at the time last year. Indeed. All right. And to go back to the question I asked you a moment ago, this concerns the payments received by AMP Life in respect of the superannuation funds operated by, I'm sorry, not operated by, of which AMP Super is the trustee? Yes. And it also concerns the payments received by NMMT in respect of the superannuation funds of which NM Super is the trustee? Yes. And it also concerns payments that are made in respect of service fees to AMP services? Yes. And it also concerns payments that are made back by AMP Life to AMP Super and NM Super? It's a trustee, yes. And what it explains or what you're asked to note is that in respect of AMP Super, it's there are there's no explanation or no identification for you of what fees are received by AMP Life in respect of the operation of the AMP Super Super funds. Sorry, could you say that again? Yes, if you have a look at the paper, yeah. you see there's an identification of what fees AMP Super receives from AMP Life. You see it at the bottom of page 104. Yes, it says that. And there's an explanation of what service fees are paid to AMP services. Yes. But there's no explanation of what fees AMP Life <coughs> takes from the superannuation funds of which AMP Super is the trustee. Not in the, not there. There's not. No. no. Do you know what the quantum of fees is that AMP Life takes from the superannuation funds of which AMP Super is the trustee? Well, I think later uh, on page 107. Yes. It it talks about platform fee revenue received from Wealth and TRP. Yes. Now this is. I can see why. This might have led to an error, that is in relation to wealth and the retirement plan. That's what TRP is. Yeah. Wealth and the retirement plan are the superannuation funds operated by NM Super. Yes. And these are the fees received by NMMT in relation to the superannuation funds that NM Super operates. You're saying that this paper is all about NMMT's fees? No, no. The first part you see, the first part of the paper <coughs> is about the fees paid in respect of AMP super, and the second part of the paper is about the fees paid in respect of NM super. Oh, sorry, yes, on page 105. Yeah. Yes. So <coughs> if we just step through it, what you're told in summary is AMP Life, AMP Services and NMMT retain the margins of the trustees superannuation business in exchange for providing the trustees with the financial, technical and administrative support they require to provide products and services to its members. Do you see that? It's under the heading summary. On which on the, page? On page 104. Yes. Yep. And then you have a heading which is ASL. Yes. And ASL is AMP Super. Yes. And then there's a heading which is Trustee Fee Revenue. Yes. And it's explained that is the amount that AMP Life 
pays to AMP Super? Yes. And that calculation is an amount of $2.17 per member? Yes. And then there's an explanation of the service fee paid by AMP Super to AMP Services? Yes. And that fee is calculated as $1.96 per member? Per annum, yes. And then if you go over the page, you see a table that sets out how those figures work out, which is that AMP Life in 2016 paid $6.186 million to AMP Super? Yes. And then AMP Super paid $5.6 million to AMP Services? Yes. And those payments are all just the effect of the two relevant commercial agreements in place? Yes. I think I, I say two relevant. I think it right. might actually be one relevant agreement, which is the master outsourcing agreement. Yeah. And so the consequence is you don't receive information about, or you didn't receive information in this paper as to how much money AMP Life is taking out of the AMP super funds? No. And it doesn't really matter because the administration of those funds is left to them. Correct. And then for NM Super, there's another heading which is halfway down the page. Yes. And it then explains that there's again some trustee fee revenue, which is that AMP Life pays a million dollars to NM Super to cover the cost of being the trustee? Yes. And then there's a reference to platform fee revenues? Yes. <clears throat> and the platform fee revenues are all of the fees charged in respect of the wealth, personal superannuation and pension fund mm. and the retirement plan? Yes. And it explains the basis of that calculation is the product disclosure statement. Yes. Whatever is disclosed to the members, the fee they're going to charge, going to be charged, all of that money is going to go to NMMT. Yes. And then there are administration and custodial fee expenses, which are fees that NM Super pays to NMMT and also to another company called NMLA, which is the National Mutual Life Association of Australasia Limited. Yes, that's what it says. And then if you go over the page to page 106, <coughs> There's then a statement or an explanation of another fee that's paid by NM Super, which is a fixed fee of $1.32 million paid to AMP services. Yes, to provide trustee services, yes. And then it said, and this, as we understand it, is just about NM Super, all the fee arrangements referred to above, with the exception of the platform fees, are not subject to scheduled reviews and are also not legally documented and are based upon existing practice? Yes, that's what it says. And is that your understanding of what the situation was? Yes, that's what I was advised. And as the trustee, or as the chairman of the trustee, did that seem strange to you that the trustee would be paying out money to related companies without any documented arrangement? I assume, well, I can't say that I focus on that particular sentence, but I understood that the arrangements for payment of fees between the trustee and the service provider were documented. I'm sorry, you understood what? I understood that those arrangements were documented. I see. So when it said they weren't legally documented, did you ask any questions about that? 
I can't remember whether I did or not, but I'm reading it now. I'm surprised that it says that. And the amount of money that is described as the platform fees is in 2016 373.7 million dollars. Yes. And all of those fees go to NMMT. Yes. Right. Attend to that document, Commissioner. Is it the memo or the whole of the board pack, Mr. Hodge? Commissioner, there's another part of that board pack that we'll go to later, so I might take the entirety of it. Yes. Um, board pack of uh, uh, AMP Super Annuation Limited and NM Super Annuation Proprietary Limited. Uh, board meeting to be held on 16 August 2017, AMP 6000 becomes Exhibit 5.269. Thank you, Commissioner. Now, Mr Allett, you referred to before the way in which reporting happens from other parts of the business back into the trustee. Yes. And I think what you were explaining was that is the only way that the trustee can know what is going on with the administration of the trust funds by the other AMP entities. Well, the trust, yes. Well, I mean, we have all sorts of um, presentations to the board in relation to what's happening. Um, is that what you're referring to? Perhaps if we take it in a couple of steps. At each of the five board meetings, people come from different Sorry, parts of the... Sure Apologies, <laughs> Commissioner, that was my Apple Watch getting excited. Uh, <laughs> at least something's getting excited. <laughs> at each of the five scheduled board meetings of the trustees, there are people who come from different parts of the AMP business and give presentations to the board of the trustees. Yes. And they will cover various topics, either for noting or sometimes for approval by the board. Yes. And there's also something called the BMM framework. Yes. The reporting that occurs at the board meetings, is that pursuant to the BMM framework or is that separate from the BMM framework? No, the, the, we have a report on the BMM framework quarterly. And the quarterly BMM framework report is to assist the trustee to understand what risks or issues there are that will arise in relation to the business. Well, we have an audit and risk report as well as, a, as the BMM report, yes. Perhaps if you explain to the Commissioner, what is the purpose that the BMM report serves? The BMM is actually what it means. It's a business monitoring model, and it monitors the services that are contracted to be provided by AMP Life to the trustees, or AMP Life and NMT. And is the way that it works that there are certain identified exceptions within yes. the framework? Yeah, I mean, there's service standards that are set, and if there are any exceptions to that, they are the subject of a report. And we have the practice of, if there is an exception, whomever is responsible for that exception, that part of the business comes to the board meeting and explains what has happened and what they're doing about it. And so the exception might, for example, be that over a 36 month period, a particular investment had underperformed its benchmark. I don't think the business monitoring model has a performance criteria in relation to particular investments. No, no. There are performance, for every investment, somebody has set a performance objective. Yes. Presumably AMP Life has set the performance objective. Actually, what's now called the GIC sets the performance objectives. The GIC is? The Group Investment Committee. 
but that's a committee within the AMP business rather than part of the trustee. Yes. And Although the trustee, we are represented on, we have an observer on that in Rachel. Does Miss Sampson go and observe that, or is yes. it somebody, Miss Sampson? Or, or sometimes it might be another person within trustee services. Okay. And the GIC will set whatever the performance targets are for all sorts of investments. Yes. And will it set the targets for particular superannuation products? Yes. So, for example, the CPI plus target for the balanced My Super product will be set by the GIC. Or approved by the GIC, yes. Approved by the GIC. And then that will ultimately, you would expect, be reported back to the trustee about. Yes, if there were some issues about that, yes. Would you expect that if there was... You wouldn't expect it just as a matter of course to be reported back? If there... Depends on the pro I mean, there's lots and lots of products. Um, are you talking about a singular product? Yes, for any changes to the CPI performance. If there's any significant change, it would be reported back to us. All right. And if a product fails consistently to meet the performance target, is that something that, as you understand it, gets reported back to the board under the BMM framework? Not under the BMM framework, no. But it does get reported back to the board? Yes, I'd expect it would be. Perhaps to assist, oh look, we've got that document that we've <laughs> entirely finished with. Could we bring up? <laughs> That's unfair. We're going to go back to a part of it later. Can we bring up AMP.6000.0151.7160? Do you have a copy of that document, Commissioner? Yes. No. Oh, we're handing it up. That's not Can I get some indication of time on target for this? Because uh, it's undesirable that all this should go on as private little converse between three of us, I think. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner. I know there have been hurdles. We won't pursue those. We, we, we have this document now. Well, the target has been arrived at on time. <laughs> uh, but if uh, at some point it looks as though stopping for 10 minutes will get the documents into a state where we can go through more smoothly, then it'll be more efficient in the long run, I think, if we do that rather than live hand to mouth, which I rather suspect is happening at the moment. There are a few people come on top and paddling very fast underneath, I think. Thank you, Commissioner. Now, Mr Allett, this is the quarterly investment management report that's provided to the trustees by the chair of the AMP Investment Committee. Yes. And if you go to page three of that, that document, which is dot seven one six two. Yes. So this is the exceptions criteria. Yes. And 
I'm not sure whether I misunderstood what you were saying before. Was the point you were making that this exceptions criteria for investment performance is not something that falls under the ambit of the BMM? Well, the BMM is, covers a whole lot of things, but there's a specific report on the BMM, and we have other reports in addition to that, and this is one of them. Yes, th this is an additional report yes. that comes to the board. Yeah, but I mean, you could say well, it's all about. I'm not sure that Mr. Allard is, has accepted that this document comes to the board. All right. <clears throat> Does the board not receive the quarterly? investment management report? I don't think we do receive it as such. I think it goes to the trustee services. I see. And if there's any issues, then trustee services would bring those issues to us. I was reading this and thinking I don't know that I've actually seen this actually specifically before, but I... You're not yeah. sure? No, I'm not sure. I need to look at the board papers to see whether this was tabled at the board, but we would not always get this report. It goes to the... Group Investment Committee goes to Trustee Services. Group in, again, Group Investment Committee is a committee outside of yes. the trustee. Yep. yep. So this is coming from the Group Investment Committee to says the Trustee Quarterly Investment Management Report, but I expect it goes particularly in the first instance to Trustee Services. Yes. And If we, again, if you just look though on page dot seven one six two, so this is setting out the exceptions criteria. Yes. And there's three steps in the criteria, which we'll come to in a moment. But do you see at the bottom of the page it says, if an exception is triggered, trustee management will inform the chair, AMP investment committee, and advise the reason for the exception rating. Yes. And then it says the board will be provided with the current quarterly investment management report and the chair AMP investment committee will attend the next trustee board meeting and explain the circumstances of the event causing the exception rating and the remedy proposed. Yes. And I think I understand the point you're making, which is unless an exception was triggered, then you wouldn't expect this report to be provided to the board. Correct. So this report setting out the quarterly investment performance would go to the office of the trustee but not need to be referred up to the board unless an exception was triggered. Yes. And the exceptions have these three criteria. Yes. Insofar as we're concerned with underperformance, we see that the second dot point is identification, significant underperformance against peers benchmarks over rolling 36 month period. Yes. And then if it passes through the identification filter, then there's a second filter, which is further investigation is triggered where, and then there's certain things that are identified there. Yes. And then if it passes through that filter, then the third filter, which is where an exceptions report will be issued, is relevantly if an investment option remains under investigation or on the exceptions list for a period of eight or more quarters. Yes. <coughs> so it would seem as if it will be necessary for an investment to underperform for five years before it would be reported to the board, is that right? No, I couldn't accept that. I'm just wondering, you see filter one, significant underperformance against peers benchmarks over rolling 36 month period. Yes. So it has to underperform over a 36 month period before it passes through the first filter. Yes, that's what that says. And it has to significantly underperform. Yes. And then there's the second stage. And then the third stage, which is where the exception report will be issued, is where the invest investment option remains under investigation or on the exceptions list for a period of eight or more quarters. 
Yes. So what we're just trying to understand is, is it, is it possible for an exceptions report to come to the board about investment performance any earlier than where the underperformance has occurred over a five year period? Um, yes, Mr. Hollow. Um, 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 the, the question is uh, a little unfair, and I don't want to um, explain it because of comments you made earlier in the hearing block about. Uh, insinuating answers for the witness. I'm very, very conscious I'll of that. I want Mr. Allett to leave the room. Um, all I, want, I, I, I won't need to do that. All I want to say is that it's clear from this document that there are other ways in which that might happen. And Mr. Mr. Allett is, I think, if I may suggest this, an experienced director uh, who is not demonstrating any inability to understand what he is being asked, and he is not demonstrating, I think, any inability to uh, deal with what he is asked. But is there Thank something you. more than that, Mr. Hollow? I'm just concerned about the rolled up way in which it was put, um, and I'm concerned that um, the witness has said that he hasn't. He may not have seen this document. It doesn't go to the board. Yes. Go on, Mr Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. I will ask my question again. Is it possible for an exceptions report to come to the board about investment performance any earlier than where the underperformance has occurred over a five-year period? Yes, it is possible. And in what circumstances would that happen? I would, if there was something that was really bothering uh, the Group Investment Committee and relaying it to the trustee services or was bothering uh, our trustee services representative on the GIC, they would alert the board to that fact. And that's something that you would expect to occur outside of this exceptions framework, is yes. that right? Yes. So getting a groan from my friend. He can give whatever evidence he wants to give later, I think. In relation to your evidence, Mr Allett. I'm, I'm not sure that's quite fair. I'm not well, giving evidence. just let's settle down, get on. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Mr Allett, do you review the exceptions criteria? Yes. These exceptions criteria will be set by the board, wouldn't they? I can't remember setting this one. I mean, you're pointing out to me that it could take five years if it was strictly followed here, and I've never had that consciousness. Have you had exceptions reports about underperformance, to your recollection, provided to the board? Yes. And in what circumstances were they provided that you can recall? Well, they would, provi they would be provided where they thought that was a significant issue. What are the products of the superannuation funds that you can recall have underperformed? Uh, well, some, some have underperformed uh, against competitive products or I've had many discussions with uh, AMP Capital where I've been concerned that um, so there has been underperformance in some products uh, where our members could read and read the newspaper and see comparisons of funds that they often see. So I've asked questions about how that occurs and what they're doing about it. I just want to try to take this in pieces. You're, you seem to be referring to a situation where you have read the newspaper and identified that an AMP product is underperforming compared to a comparative peer product? Is that I'm right? just giving that as one example yes. of how it could happen, yes. And but other examples would be trustee services, as I mentioned earlier. Trustee services would think that there was an issue and they'd bring that to the board's attention. And can you recall that having happened this year? Yes. And in relation to what product did that happen? 
in relation to cash products. And attended this document, Commissioner. Trustee, quarterly investment management report dated uh, 12 May 16, AMP 6001517160, exhibit 2.270. Could, could I just uh, clarify what I just said? I said in relation to cash products. Yes. What I should have said is in relation to products that had a cash element. Yes. The, just so we're clear on what you mean, a product might have or might be comprised of different investments. Yes, different asset allocations. It could be, for example, 70% Australian equities, 20% international equities, 10% cash. And an issue was raised in relation to the performance of cash investments. The cash component, yes. That's right. Somebody could, for example, be 100% invested in cash. Would be rare, but they could be, yes. We've got some member statements, so I'll show you those in a moment. And there was an issue that was raised with the board as to the underperformance of cash. Yes. And what do you recall the issue was? That there had been negative returns for some members had had negative returns for the cash element of their product. And was that specifically in relation to the Super Directions Fund? Well, it included the Super Directions Fund, yes. Was Super Directions Fund the fund in which cash performed worse? worse. Yes. That was the fund. Yeah, I understand. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm, I, I think I understand your point, which is you're not trying to suggest that cash performed well in the other funds that Correct. are operated. Yeah. It's just that it performed worse. Well, that's the one that's had the focus. Yes. Yeah. Because it's managed to generate negative returns on cash for three years. In some instances, that may be right, yes. And on the cash element, I continue to, of a product. Yes, if a member has an investment in cash, then that part that is invested in cash has generated a negative return. Yes. And that was brought to the board's attention in May? Yes. If we bring up AMP.6000.0128.8719. So these are the board papers Thank you. from May of 2018. Yes. And this meeting occurred on the 14th of May 2018. Yes. And if we go to the page dot eight seven five eight. Yes, I'm there. Sorry. That's right, Mr. Allett. We're just waiting for the oh. system to catch up with you. I beg your pardon. You're racing ahead of us. <laughs> this you'll see is a memorandum to the directors. This is of NM Super. That is the directors of NM Super rather than AMP Super. Yes. And it's raising an issue for the board of the trustee to note. Yes. And it should note an incident, and the incident has two components. The first is 
the negative net returns for members in the super directions cash management trust investment options over the last three years? Yes. And gaps identified in the current controls framework to effectively monitor NM Super's compliance obligations, specifically in meeting Prudential Standard SPS 530 relating to performance reporting of investment options. Do you see that? Oh, I mean, I'm aware that happened, but can you point out where it is on this? It's just at the top of the page under the heading recommendation. Oh, I beg your pardon, yes. <coughs> and what triggered this was that APRA sent a request for information to AMP on the 1st of March 2018? Yes. And that was because APRA was conducting, or perhaps is conducting, a targeted review of cash options? Yes. And it had identified the super directions cash management trust investment option as something in respect of which it sought information? Yes. And then that then led to this reporting to the board? Yes. Now that seems like it's something, a reporting that's occurring separately from the exceptions framework? Yes. Do you draw any conclusions about the adequacy of the exceptions framework if the first time that you found out that the cash management trust in super directions had net negative returns for three years was as a result of an inquiry from APRA? Uh, I can acknowledge that the reporting, we weren't asking for reports on negative cash returns, obviously. Um, so the reporting wasn't instructed to report on negative cash returns or negative returns in other products, but it has been now. That is, there's now been a change. Yes. That the board will have to be told. Yes. If there are negative net returns. Yes. Do you know why there are negative net returns in cash? Yes. And what are the reasons? Well, the reasons can be complex, but um, there's uh, a fee charged on the ba in some cases, it's a fee charged to a product um, which doesn't differentiate between the asset allocation of that product. And so if a product has $100 and $70 of it is Australian equities and 20 is international equities and 10% is cash, the same fee is charged over that whole amount. In other aspects, if there's uh, just cash only, um, then there's an administration fee that absorbed the interest return on that product. I see. Now, you offered your understanding as involving two issues. One was where the member's investment was split between different investment options and one of them was cash and there was the same investment management fee charged across all investment options? Yes. And the second was that where a member was wholly invested in cash, it was possible that their administration fee would exceed the return on cash. Yes. Can I show you some member statements? Can we bring up AMP.6000? I'm sorry, Commissioner, I tender that document. Uh, ASL and NM Super Board Papers, May 18, AMP 6000128871, Exhibit 2.271. We bring up AMP.6000.0251.4428.
So this is a member statement from April of 2015. Yes, 11th of April, to the, yeah. And I'll just check this. The month and year of birth has been redacted, but I understand that's not actually subject to a non-publication direction. So I can tell you the month and year of birth is May 1960. Right. And you'll see this member statement is for the period or the year ending the 28th of February 2015. Yep. Members don't all have the same statement period as we understand it. No, they don't. And if we go over the page to dot four four two nine. You see this member is 100% invested in cash. Yes. And the rate of return for this year is 0.47%. Yes. And if we go over the page to Page dot four four three one. We see at the top of the page the rebates, direct fees, and other management costs. Yes. And the direct fees are seventy six dollars eighty five. The rebates are twenty dollars ten. Yes. And the other management costs are. $1,666.72. Yes. And if we then go back a page to page dot four four three zero. Would it be possible for me to have this as one complete document, please? Thank you. <coughs> yep. We go back a page to page four four three zero. We see the investment return is three hundred and eighty one dollars and fifty nine cents. Sorry, this is on page 430. Oh, yes, four, three, yeah, zero. I beg your pardon. Yes, I see it. Now, we're just trying to understand, does that mean, as you, and you may not be able to help us, that the investment return is th on 100% cash is $381.59? but the management costs are $1,666.72. Yes, that uh, uh, the investment return would be after, the, after those fees. Oh, I see. You think the investment return is after those fees. That's how, that's ultimately how you arrive at the 0.47 per cent. Is that right? Yes, that's, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, the investment return of $381, which would be the 0.47, would be after the interest earned on the deposit, less the fees that were taken, yes. All right. I tend to that statement, Commissioner. In the statement, uh, 11 April 2015, super directions for business for year ended 28 February 15, AMP 6000 0251 4428, exhibit 2.272. Now, this person remains a member or a, a member of the AMP. Just slipped three 
sessions ago. It's 5.272. I said 2.272, if only. 5.272, Mr Hodge. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. This member remained in the AMP superannuation fund, and if we can then bring up AMP.6000.0251.4405. <coughs> So this, in your version, it's redacted, but you can... Can I ask for the full... Thanks. Yes, that's being handed over to you. Thank you. You'll be able to see Mr Allett, that's the same person? Yes. So this is now three years later. Yep. <clears throat> and if you go over to page two, which is dot four four zero six. Yes. This is where we see this person who is one hundred percent invested in cash now has a net investment option rate of return of negative point three nine percent. Yes. And does the net investment option rate of return factor in the administration fee? Yes. I see. If we go over the page to page dot four four zero nine. Yes. We see the investment fees on this 100% investment in cash are $786.22. Yes. And the administration fees are $1,202.83. Yes. And I think I understand your point to be that if we then go to page dot four four one one. That's showing a net investment earnings during the period of $451.12. Yes, it does. It's a negative return. Oh, I so your point is that's the net negative return of four hundred and fifty one dollars. Yeah, yeah. And that is after the investment fees and after the administration fees? Yes. All right. And <coughs> I tender that document, Commissioner. Member statement eight June eighteen, super directions for business for year ended twenty eight February eighteen, AMP six thousand zero two five one, is it? 4405, exhibit 5.273. I wonder, wonder whether that's right. In any event, your point is they end up with a net, in a net negative return because of the sum of both the investment management fee and the administration fee that they get charged on 100% cash. Yes. And have you made any inquiries as to why it is that a member invested in 100% cash is paying fees that are greater than the gross return? Yes. And what is the reason? Well. I've made inquiries about how this could, could all happen, and uh, obviously so is uh, AMP Life. And the outcome of that is that the administration fees have been reduced to 50 basis points. Has that already happened? It's happening. 
that's something that's been taken to the board, is that right? Yes. And you are saying it's under consideration at the moment, but you anticipate it will occur? I am. And the consequence of the administration fees are decreased by 50 basis points. No, 250 basis points. Oh, by 250 basis points. No, no. Reduced to... T -O. Oh, reduced to 50 <laughs> yeah. basis points. Yeah. And is that just the administration fee or is that also the investment management fee? No, it's the administration fee. All right. So the administration fee at the moment is about 100 basis points? It could be in excess of that. Um, you can do the calculation if you look at this document. If you, um, do you want me to do that calculation? If you want to do that calculation, no, Mr. No, Allett. If you want me to. <laughs> sure, Mr. Allett, do the calculation for us. Um, well, this client has an account of $100,000. Uh, the administration fee, which is set out there, is uh, $1,200. So that's just over 1%. 1 so it might be 1.1, yeah. and it's going to drop then by about 70 basis points. Correct. And that will then mean that the return on cash becomes marginally positive. It, it will avoid it becoming negative and could, it, yes, in this case it will be marginally positive. And from the perspective of the trustee, does that mean the issue will be closed? Yes. And have you made any inquiries to understand what return on cash is generated to members of other superannuation funds? Yes. And does that suggest to you that AMP's return on cash will remain uncompetitive? Uh, uncompetitive in relation to whom? You know that there are other superannuation funds and certainly at least some industry funds that will be paying a higher return on cash. If you're getting 0.2% on cash, it's yes. uncompetitive if you invested directly into a term deposit, obviously. Well, it's, even if you weren't investing it in a term deposit, if you just invest it in an interest-bearing account with AMP Bank, you'll get a much higher return. That's true. You agree? Yes, I do. Why is it that a member who puts their retirement savings with AMPs, with NM Super, and has those retirement savings invested 100% in cash, ends up with a substantially lower return than if they had just invested their retirement savings in an interest-bearing account with AMP Bank? You'd have to ask the client. I'd have to ask who, sorry? The client. Why they do that? Your point is, why are they foolish enough to invest their superannuation with AMP? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying at all. But, but isn't that your point? The, the, you'd have to ask the client what's in their mind when they put money into a cash account. And as you've pointed out, this person has had a cash account with AMP at least from the 1st of March 2014 to the 28th of February 2018, they've left the cash there knowing the, the return they're getting. Attend to that statement, Commissioner. Uh, have I not marked it? I think it's oh. 5.273. Thank you, Commissioner. Is that a convenient time to take How long a... do you need? Mr Hodge, is there work still happening on documents? That is, do I come back at midday or what? Commissioner, I'm told if we break for 15 minutes, then we should be able to complete the download of documents. If I come back, what, five past? Thank you, Commissioner. Could we, just to be safe, could we say 10 past, Commissioner? Thank you. Uh, 10 past. Yes. <coughs> yes, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Allett, we were talking just before the break about the fact that the AMP super companies are going to lower their administration fees. Yes. 
And is that both AMP Super and NM Super? Yes. And is that a proposal that has been brought to the boards? Yes. To and do the boards actually need to approve that, or is this ultimately, again, to return to a point you were making earlier, something that has to be determined by AMP Life? Alteration to products, I think, needs the approval of the board. I see. So your understanding is, whether it's AMP Life or NMMT, somebody has come to the board and proposed an alteration of the product to reduce the administration fee? Yes. And that was something that has been put forward by these related party companies to address the uncompetitiveness of the fees? Well, the negative return on cash, yes. It's more, though, than the negative return on cash, isn't it? Isn't there an issue about the competitiveness of the fees being charged? Yes. And if we bring up APRA.004, I'm sorry, dot triple zero four dot triple zero one dot three seven nine one. This is a letter from APRA to Ms. Sampson, but copied to you. Yes. And you see it's dated the 16th of October, 2017. Yes. And would you have looked at this letter at the time it came in? Yes. And so APRA raised an issue last year about the SST and the SDF having high costs per members for their respective generic MySuper products. Yes. And the SST, that is a trust of which AMP Super is the trustee. Yes. And Super Directions, that is a trust of which NM Super is the trustee. So both trustees had MySuper products that APRA had identified as having high cost per member. Yes, that's correct. And so is it also this issue that was identified by APRA that is to be now addressed by substantially lowering the administration fees? Yes. And I tend to that document, Commissioner. Letter from APRA to Sansom and Allet of 16 October 17, APRA 0004-0001-3791, Exhibit 5.274. You made a point <coughs> just before the break when I was asking you about the low returns on cash that we would have to ask the client why they were invested in that way. Yes, I said that. And your point, as we understood it, was the member has made the choice to invest 100% in cash. That's the yes. first part of it. Yes. And they've made the choice to invest 100% in cash with AMP. Yes, obviously. And they, now just on that, is it possible if they're in the super directions for business product, that the way in which they have ended up with AMP is because AMP is the default fund nominated by their employer? Is it possible? Yes. Right. You're not, ordinarily, if you're going to end up in super directions for business, <coughs> is that because that's the, a default fund nominated by an employer? That's part of it, yes. Can you just choose to join Super Directions yes. for business? Yes. Well, I think it's closed now, but you can. You could. As distinct from, because there's also Super Directions personal. Oh, um, I'd have to check on that. Um, so I can't be sure of my answer, whether it's, if you do choose other than through the employer route, whether you get into Super Directions personal or whether you can get into Super Directions, I actually don't know the answer to that. And so the member has ended up in the fund, in the product. There's still an obligation on you as the trustee, isn't there, to act in the best interests of the members? 
Yes. And wouldn't one way in which you would go about discharging your duty to act in the best interests of the members be to attempt to lower the fees on cash to produce a competitive return? Yes. And it seems as if, for reasons we've already looked at, merely dropping the administration fee is not going to achieve that? Achieve that in terms of a competitive return? Yes. With other available options for you to invest your cash? Yes, and indeed with other available superannuation funds where you could invest your cash. Yes, I think I'd have to say yes to that. And does that suggest then that you are going, as the chairman of the trustee, are going to be left in a position where the trustee <coughs> is unable to do something in the best interests of members because it is dependent upon the related company making a decision to lower the fees? We have to approve the fees. Yes, the lowering but, of, yes, the fees. Yeah. But you can't force the related party companies to lower the fees. No. You don't have any capacity to be able to negotiate with them or say, for example, we're going to stop investing through you and invest through some competitor? We do have that ultimate capacity, yes. Is there any sensible possibility that you would exercise that capacity? Not, not in the current circumstances, no. And so the consequence is your ability to do anything for your members is dependent upon the decisions that AMP Life or NMMT make. In relation to this cash matter you're talking about? Yes. Um, well, I think uh, well, you've outlined how it all arose, and I think that that's uh, put AMP Life um, on, on alert to what's happening uh, with these cash products in the industry. Um, and so we've entered into discussions with them, and the outcome is the lowering of the fee. Well, they've come to you with a proposal to lower the fee. Well, we've had discussions in, in relation to that. I can't say that we initiated it. But obviously we've had discussions and we have equal concern as they do. Yes. They've initiated a discussion with you about it? I can't remember who started it, but we've both very much alert to it. And they've made a decision that they will lower the fee? They've agreed to do that, yes. And they've asked you to approve that? Yes. Which unsurprisingly you're going to do? Yes. But beyond that, you are not in a position where you could sensibly say to AMP Life, this structure is not an acceptable outcome for our members, so we are going to move our investments out of AMP Life and invest them in some other way. Not in relation to this matter, no. And when you say not in relation to this matter, does that mean that there would be certain circumstances where you could conceive of the possibility that you would withdraw your investments from AMP Life? Yes, there are trigger events that we could trigger. If one of those events was triggered, we could do that. And would that be, for example, the group going into insolvency or something yes, like that? Yes, yeah, that would be a good example. Is it that sort of level of trigger, that is a truly catastrophic event not necessarily catastrophic, but a very significant event, yes. Yes. And I'm, I don't think we're disagreeing with each other. I think I'm just describing a situation in which AMP group goes into liquidation as being catastrophic. That would be catastrophic. Oh, you agree that is <laughs> catastrophic? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Commissioner, I don't have any further questions. Yes, Mr. thank Allen. you, Mr. Hodge. Yes, Mr. Hollow. Thank you. Um, 
Minister, Alec, uh, just, before the, just before the break, you were asked some questions about the negative cash returns in the uh, SDF products. Yes. Um, and you're aware that um, since uh, May, where the matter was brought to the attention of the board, uh, the board has had the matter investigated? Yes. Um, and is it the case um, that uh, the issue in relation to the cash returns is limited to uh, a small number of cash options in the SDF and, uh, and another fund? Yes. Um, and are you able to say how many um, options or um, products the, the issue was uh, uh, re related to? How many products it was related How to? How many products or options it was related to? No, I can't. Um, but it's certainly not the case um, that the issue in relation to cash returns um, um, is, uh, re relates to all AMP cash options. No, it's not the case. Um, a friend, uh, Mr Hodge asked you some questions about what had happened in relation to the board's consideration um, of the issue in relation to negative cash returns. Do you call those questions? Yes, I do. Um, are you aware as to whether um, the board made any decisions in relation uh, to that issue in its July meeting this yes. year? Yes, yes. Um, I hope this will work, Mr Commissioner. Could I call up AMP 6000 uh, 0233-0172. And if Mr... We'll try to get you a copy of the board. Thank you. Um, showing you, Mr. Uh, Allett, the board papers from the 25 July 2018 meeting um, of the concurrent boards, of which are the chairman. Yes. Um, and if you go to uh, page. 17 of the board paper, which is at 0188. Yes. <clears throat> There's a recommendation from trustee services in relation to the matter. Yes. And that's a common um, form of note or paper that you receive um, when matters are put up for the board's consideration during your tenure as chairman. Yes, we receive a report from trustee services on the board paper that's being put up, yes. From Mr Sansom's team? Yes. Um, and then if you go to the next page, you'll see uh, a memorandum in relation to the super directions uh, negative member return matter. Yes. And does that jog your memory as to whether or not the, the matter was um, considered by the board in July? <coughs> yes. Um, and you'll see um, uh, on uh, at page 19 the key considerations, <coughs> issues and considerations at 0190. Do you see that, Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you. Um, and you'll see that uh, there are a number of products listed there um, in which the uh, issue of negative returns has been identified. Yes, I do. And so far as you're aware, uh, the nine products or options that are listed there, um, uh, all the products 
where this uh, issue has been identified. Yes. And there aren't any others so far? Not to my know. knowledge. Um, if you go over the page at 0191, you'll see under the heading fee reduction. Yes. Um, a review of the product's administ administration fee has been carried out and product has re requested a reduction in the administration fee of 0.5% uh, yes. in relation to SRI products and 0.7% in relation to the mature products. Yes. Um, of the, of, for each of the impacted products. Yes. Uh, investment options. Yes. And then under in incident rectification, you see that a project manager has been appointed to manage the incident. Yes. And the paper sets out how the rectification is progressing. And you'll see there that the first uh, aspect, for part A or uh, phase one, is that existing members within these invest investment options will have their product administration fee reduced for the relevant invest investment op option. Yes. And the appointed actuaries of has, uh, Actuary's approval has been obtained in relation to the fee reduction. Yes. Um, and that IT changes are scheduled for 20, were scheduled for 27 July for the reduction. Yes. Um, and that appropriate member and internal stakeholder communications would be prepared. Yes. Does that jog your memory as to whether or not the board in fact approved uh, the fee reduction on the 27th of July? Yes, it, it did, yes. Sorry? Yes, we did. Thank you. And then um, underneath that, um, the second phase um, of the what's described as the incident rectification involves um, remediation. Yes. Uh, and you'll see that there is a remediation program uh, that's set out there. Yes. Do you understand how the remediation will take place? On yes. On what basis? Could you explain it to the Commissioner, please? Where people have had a negative return, they will have their fees reduced in accordance with this and be compensated for the cost it's been to them um, for having that negative return over the last three years, I think. Was that something that you advocated for, Mr Allett? Yes. Um, and then the last aspect of the incident rectification involves the requirements of monitoring investment options. Are you aware of that? Yes. And you'll see that appropriate reporting is being established to ensure that the trustees' obligations are met. Yes. And the gap uh, in relation to the requirements highlighted that the monitoring and reporting of performance was completed at the underlying asset level by A&P Capital as the investment manager. However, reporting and monitoring at the member level at a net of fees and tax position was not being performed. Yes. And I you understand, understand that. that that is being rectified? Yes. What confidence do you have that it will be rectified? Complete. Um, thank you. Um, Before the document comes down, can we go back a page? I want to understand how much funds under management was affected by this. Do I read those tables as indicating that there was uh, round numbers, uh, 43 million uh, funds under management yes. affected? Yes. With approximately uh, 12,500 members? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and the remediation has been set in the order of about $5 million. About $5 million? Yes. My next question. Thank you. Um, now, um, before I tend to that document, um, the... Um, I have just one other matter, Mr Allerton. Do I understand that uh, before the change in system, the trustee had uh, no material provided to it about uh, uh, the position of individual members, simply uh, uh, what was being achieved in the related company? Yes. Yes. Go on, Mr Hollow. Um, Mr. Alp, was your understanding that um, the the issue that was um, the the issue uh, that 
was, that is sought to be rectified in relation to this matter um, in the board papers um, is the gap in relation to the reporting of performance at the underlying asset level. Yes. And that the problem was that uh, the reporting uh, was uh, not done net of fees. Correct. Thank you. Um, you were asked some questions uh, by Mr Hodge concerning um, a particular member and you were shown some uh, member statements. Yes. And uh, the member that, uh, in whose statements you were shown by Mr Hodge had uh, invested 100% cash in the SDF cash option. Do you recall that? I do. Um, have you uh, inquired as to how many uh, members um, uh, have made 100% uh, investment in the SDF cash options? Yes, I have. Uh, and what was the result of that inquiry? I think there were three above the age uh, um, of 65 and four below the age of 65. Thank you. Um, and uh, Mr Hodge also took you to uh, a letter from APRA, the 16th of October 2017, which related to um, the My Super Options. Um, and performance related issues there. I haven't got that letter in front of me. No, but, but you recall yes, I the, do. The, the issue yes, I do. in the October 2017. Um, now, um, is that something, uh, were, was the My Super pricing another matter which you considered at the July 2018 board, uh, board meeting? Yes. And if I could just jog your memory, um, if you go to 0180. <coughs> I'll withdraw that. What can I go to? I'm so sorry, Mr. Commissioner. In any event, do you recall um, whether or not the board made any resolutions in relation to the reduction of administration and investment f and administration and investment fees at that meeting? Yes, I think we did. I, I should need to well, read the paper. He understands. I don't. I'm lost. What document are we looking at? <coughs> I'm so sorry, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, we did consider that. Thank you. You're ahead of me, Mr. Allett. I'm trying to oh, catch beg your up. Pardon. I'm playing beg six pardon, furlongs sir. behind the pack at the <laughs> moment because we don't know what the document is. I mixed the metaphor myself, I think, with that one. It's the board pack of the 25th of July. That's what you're referring to, isn't it? Um, and um, lo looking at the uh, looking at zero one eight four, Mr. Allett. No, um, I don't want it brought up. Oh, okay. Uh, beg your pardon. I want you to look at it, Mr. Allett. Yes, I am looking at it. Yes, and you see there that some proposals for the administration fees. There are uh, reductions uh, in relation to the SST fund of zero point six four percent. To 0.29 per cent? Yes. Part of this document is um, subject to a, a commercial incompetence claim that is, hasn't been decided. In any event, Mr. Allett, your um, 
are you aware as to whether or not any resolutions were made in relation to price reductions in relation to the My Super uh, administration and investment fees? Yes, they were. Um, uh, Mr. Commissioner, I tender uh, the July 2018 board papers. And I'll have to come back to uh, the price reductions once the confidentiality claims have been sorted out. But at this stage, I would tender. I'm surprised I haven't ruled on it. I seem to have ruled on more uh, NPD issues in this than uh, uh, imaginable. But there we are, ASL, NM, Super Board, Papers for meeting of 25 July 18, AMP 6002330172. Is that it? At 0188 through to. Uh, can I do 0194? To 0194. Exhibit 5.275. Now, could I take Mr. Allett to exhibit? Uh, 5.260. Surprised. 5.260. My note. It's an agreement between the trustee of uh, ANZ and ANZ. Well, we'll have to. 5.260. What are you after? What's the doc ID? AMP 6000 uh, 5.270, Trustee Quarterly Investment Management Report. So AMP 6000 I'm sure that was tendered. Yes, it was. It's Exhibit 5.270. Thank you. And you were taken, uh, Mr Allett, to uh, 7162. I'm not sure whether Mr. Uh, I'm not sure what. Oh, so, uh, here's an, yeah, 7162. The exceptions yeah. criteria. Yeah. This is part of the uh, Trustee Quarterly Investment Management Report? Yes, the BMM reporting in relation to that that Mr. Hodge asked you some questions about. Yes. And um, you were taken to. Uh, the trustees, trustee exceptions criteria and number three on that page. Yes. You were asked whether um, the only way um, exceptions would come to the board is if there was underperformance for five, ye for five years by reference to the first bullet point on that page. Yes, I remember that discussion. If you have a look at uh, uh, the other bullet points under uh, the uh, under the exceptions report in section three. You see that? I can. Yes. And is one of those matters, any matter in the opinion of the trustee services concerning investment reporting that should be brought to the attention of the boards? Yes. Um, and is, is that to your understanding one way in which um, reports would be issued to the board? Yes. And do you understand that the other um, bullet points are alternatives to the first. Yes. Uh, finally, you were um, asked some questions about the presentations that come to the board from members of the business. Yes. And you said <coughs> that members from the business um, come to the board to explain exceptions yes. under the business, business monitoring uh, framework. Is it the case that the board can ask uh, for members from the business to come outside of the exceptions reporting? Yes, and we do. Thank you. No further questions? Yes, thank you, Mr Hollow. Anything arising out of that, Mr Hodge? No, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr Allett. You may step down and you are thank excused. You, sir. I beg your pardon? You may step down and you're excused. Oh, thank don't, you. Don't miss those words when they're no, uttered, no, Mr. No. Allen. <laughs> Perhaps I wanted them emphasised. <laughs> <laughs>